Hello and welcome to a new video lecture. In this video lecture, we are going to demonstrate the simple moving average crossover strategy for the Ethereum US dollar crypto pair. Here we have got the two simple moving average lines. The green line is the longer term period and the red line is the shorter term period. So we take a long position, that is we buy shares of the crypto pair whenever the red line crosses above the green line and we exit the position and sell the shares whenever the, the red line goes below the green line so this is a signature that the shorter term period is uh, an above trend the trend is going up and whenever the, gr the red line goes below the, gr the green line it is a signal a signal that the, we are getting a downtrend so for example if we have the position at hand here we can see the red line crossed over the green line and crossed below again so let's take a long position in this case and we exit the position at this point and we observe here a positive PNL profit and loss we have here a profit uh, if we take another position just for sake of demonstration our petri position and we observe the result here for example we can observe here we get a negative pnl that is a loss position so we are not taking our petri position in this demonstration we are taking the positions as, as triggered by the signals in these charts so for the sake of this demonstration we are going to use python backtrader library the backtrader library is a python library for backtesting as you can observe here there are many sections in the documentation i recommend that you go quickly over them you can start with a quick start guide i would also recommend going over the platform concepts to familiarize yourself with the basic concepts used in the trading platform one of the basic concepts in this trading platform is the concept of lines. The data is not provided to the trading algorithm as single points, rather as a time series. And the last position is always referenced with index zero. So instead of having the current position in the end of the array, it will be always in the beginning of the array. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to use crypto data from cryptodownload.com slash data and you can find here different data sets from different vendors. Here is the notebook that contains the code for this demonstration. We start by installing backtrader library and then import the backtrader as bt and other python libraries we start here by designing our strategy the strategy here has got the parameters observe here we've got three parameters we've got the period one which is the longer term period for the simple moving average and period two for the shorter term and we've got here a take profit percentage one percent that is whenever we enter the position or made a trade that yielded 1% or more in profit, we are going to exit the position and take the profit. In the initialization, we initialize the simple moving average indicator using the indicator library available in Backtrader for the two different periods, the short and the long term periods. And then we have a boolean that indicates whether we are currently in a position. This is important because sometimes when you are in a position you don't want to trigger the signal over and over again and enter new position while you are still in the old position and for the sake of taking profit we record the last price for this uh, data feed and from there in the next method this is triggered as a time series progress that every point in the data this is a minute data crypto pair so we trigger this next for every minute on the data feed. So we record the close price and then we check whether we are in a position. 
and if we are not in a position we check this the signal from the long term and the short term moving average and here we indicate the shorter term as SMA2 and if it goes above the sh longer term period then we enter a new trade using the method self.py and record the close price and record the close price On the opposite, if we are in a position and then the short term period goes below the long term period or in that case we have got a percentage of change over the last price that is greater than the take profit percentage, then we sell or exit the position. Backtrader library can be used in live trading. And in this case, depending on the broker connected to the library, you get different signals for the order status. So you get status for the order as submitted, accepted, rejected, margin, cancelled, and so on. So for sake of logging, when the order is completed in this backtest, we trigger a logging method available also in this strategy, uh, strategy class and record that we are currently in a new position. And similarly, when we have a complete successful sell position, we log the data and exit the position by setting the boolean to false. There is a method here, long, uh, log, and the method log is used for logging using the date time of the backtest, that is the calendar for the data provided in the data feed will be used here and then some other information that are buzzed in as the parameter text. Finally, at the end of the backtest, the method stop is triggered, and here we log the parameters of the uh, backtest strategy. In this case, we have three parameters, the, log, the long term period, the short term period, and the take profit percentage, and finally the portfolio value. This will become useful as we see how to optimize the parameters of the strategy next. Next, I add a helper function to read the CSV data I have downloaded from CryptoDataDownload.com and here I read the path of the data and convert it to a pandas data frame and pass the parameters for the headers and the escape rows, etc. And then I convert the date values to a pandas date time so that the backtesting library can render them and parse the date times and I sort them ascending order because uh, they come in the opposite descending order and to make the backtest run quickly I run it with 250 samples or 250 records from the data frame uh, if you run the whole data frame it will take longer but that should be the correct use case this is only for sake of demonstration and finally, I return a Bandis data. This is a class in the Backtrader library used to render Bandis data frame as a data feed for the backtesting uh, process. Then I initialize the backtesting engine, Cerebro. This is the engine or the brain or where the processing happens of this backtesting library, Backtrader. And I add a strategy the moving average crossover strategy I have demonstrated above and then add the data and you can see here you can play around with the other file available all the files are mounted inside the Google Drive and you can find these data files in the comments for this uh, video lecture so you can uncomment this data uh, file and see how the performance goes on At this uh, case, if you uncomment the file, it will append it to the other data uh, feed in. But if you'd like to have multiple data feeds, I would recommend that you add a parameter, data2, and then you add a name so that you can uh, add the sample, for example, Ethereum USD. And likewise for the crypto uh, Bitcoin, you can add uh, Bitcoin USD and then run the two data feeds together. Then I set the parameters for the broker. I set the cash starting cash to be $100,000 and I set the commission for the broker as 2% of every transaction 
and before the back test I set the portfolio value and likewise after the back test I set the portfolio value again there are kind of peculiar behaviors for Serepro or back trader and this behavior can be controlled with these methods further over like signal accumulate and signal concurrent when using the indicators built-in indicators of back trader uh, it tends to have multiple signals triggered simultaneously if you are using multiple thread multi-threading or multi-processing and uh, this behavior as in the comment i leave here for more clarity can be controlled by setting these parameters to false and then for every trade i set the number of shares to be purchased to 100 you can control the number from here so you can set it to buy less uh, fewer shares or more shares depending on the back test you are conducting finally we run the back test repro to run and observe the results it enters positions and exit positions and finally we get the final value for the portfolio and then we can use repro.plot and add some parameters to get to customize their final plot resulting in this process and you can observe here the green uh, uh, triangular shapes uh, indicate entering positions and the red triangular shapes uh, in the opposite side indicate exiting these positions so uh, apparently uh, given the commission uh, set for this broker and the parameters this wasn't the optimal strategy to begin with how can we optimize the parameters of the strategy so if you scroll back up you can find here I commented out a piece of code so I will go back and comment out the add strategy line and uncomment this optimizer line so this line instructs Srepro back trader that we want to optimize the strategy that we have developed above my uh, moving average crossover strategy and then we want to optimize the period one for the longer term period to be between 10 and 50 and then period two to be somewhere between 5 and 10 and the take profit percentage to be a float with numpy a range for float steps and then somewhere between uh, 0.001 and 0.1 and with a step 0.001 what will happen here is that the back trader system will trigger every combination of these different values and do some kind of random search on them or great search on them so that you can find the optimal values for your strategy and then use them for the actual backtest this is a very helpful feature in backtesting so that if you are in doubt of some parameters and you have multiple values to choose in between this feature can help you choose the optimal hyperparameters for your algorithm and uh, when you do this you find that it will print the actual parameters and the result using the stop method at the end of every backtest it has conducted thank you and see you in a future video lecture